Hi, I'm Ryan, and this is my sister Cassidy. This past year, we gave up our entire lifestyle, from our jobs to our apartments, and dedicated all of our time and energy to bring you this project, Journey of Action. We truly believe that our generation is aware of the social and environmental challenges we face on a local level and a global level. They lack tools for action. So on our journey from Alaska to Argentina, we'll be bringing you the most inspiring, action-based stories of Gen Y changemakers. We start our first week off here in America's last frontier, Juneau, Alaska, where people understand the relationship between nature and society. We're here to highlight ocean conservation. We're going to talk to a scientist from the nonprofit Oceana, a young fisherwoman, and a local business. Who are all dedicated to one thing, conserving our oceans. This is where we stayed our very first night. Yeah, Alaska Hotel. I think, I think it, the first time the Alaska Hotel opened, was when Juno was founded. It had like old old school newspaper on one side of the wall that was its like insulation. And it, it was, was cool. I didn't I literally tried to like I'd put stuff down so I would not step on the carpet, I would step on these little O C D little about earlier climate change is is coming very quickly. Um, and especially so in the Arctic. And that's really um, setting up this situation where as goes the Arctic in many ways, so goes the planet. What can we do, even though we're not living in Alaska, to help affect uh, change or help affect um, positive policy making? That it's the voice of the people in the U.S. that that the people in Washington D.C. really should be listening to. And but we, uh, Oceana, worked on conducting a poll mm -hmm. of voters um, across the U.S. And one of the really interesting things that came out of that is they really support this precautionary science-based ecosystem approach. People want to know that before you go and develop and drill for oil and gas in the region that you know what, your, what the potential impacts are and that you're going to have the capabilities to go in and respond to uh, any potential spills or any potential disasters that, that occur, such as we unfortunately learned with the Gulf of Mexico. We just were uh, walking uh, around the harbor, uh, met a really cool 27 year old who basically lives off of her boat and fishes, and uh, as you can tell. You're a little wet. I am Amanda Dunaway, the owner, operator, and captain of the FV Peggy, the fishing vessel of the Peggy, built in 1912. What was the day like when you first, uh, you know, you kind of made up your mind to live this lifestyle? What, what yeah, what was, that, what was that day like? When I was in Sitka last summer and saw this boat pull in, I don't know, something just awoke in me. And, I talked to the guy, the first thing he said to me, I told him I liked his boat and he said, well you want it, it's for sale. And I was like, it took me a minute to answer, but I was like, yeah I do. Why salmon is so healthy for you, partly, is because of all the nutrients they pick up in the ocean from their food and just the water and just all the trace elements that they have. So farm fish aren't going to have that. So you take a farm salmon and compare it, you know, point for point with the one that I would catch on this boat and, and they're completely different animals. If you can't be sustainable, then everyone suffers. You know, but you get out what you put in in any sort of self-sustaining lifestyle, and that's a great way to be. And it's, you know, it's it, it's kind of a dream now, but it's it can be a reality. But it's not how we operate anymore, as largely as a society. But it's still available. I mean, we're in the last frontier, so do whatever you want. <laughs> we're here at the Alaskan Brewing Company. They not only brew sustainably, but they also donate a percent of their profits to ocean conservation. I look forward to finding out how and why they brew sustainably and the benefits of doing so. Let's check it out. We call it quietly brewing up here in Alaska. We just do what we do and we feel really good about what we do and hopefully people are proud of what we do. And in Alaska, it was the first place that I've ever been but I actually stepped into the wilderness and felt like I was leaving tracks that there were no tracks there. Yeah. Like I was, holy smokes, I'm impacting a place. I'm being in a place. And it really came home, you know, as far as, wow, I want to be very careful about what I do up here. It's a precious place. That kind of spurred the way the brewery was developed. We're in a small town. There's only 30,000 people here. It only has a certain infrastructure. 
So as it grows, we grow, but we can't grow faster than it does. You're not sustainable to make more profit. You're right. sustainable because that's what you believe in. For, yeah. yeah. For instance, this uh, this uh, first being the first people to have a steam boiler that's operated by spent grain. I mean that. We're not doing it because we're going to be the first. We're doing it because it's really cool. <laughs> in 2007, when we decided we were going to release a new year-round beer with our IPA, um, we uh, we always kind of knew that we wanted to do a product with a cause. Um, and we sat down with a, a big group of us and thought about it. And as we've shared with you, um, our entire supply chain and the way we uh, get our beer to market relies on the water. All of our raw materials come up by barge, and all of our beer ha goes back out by boat. Um, and we rely so much on the water, or, you know, the ocean and Gastineau Channel here for not only for our business, but for recreation, for fishing, for you know, so much of our livelihood that it only made sense for us to give back to that which has given us so much. Um, so one percent of proceeds from all of our Alaskan IPA uh, is dedicated to the Coastal Code. Uh, code is an acronym that stands for Clean Oceans Depend on Everyone.